Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Covenant of Promise Ministries Sunday morning worship service. You've done well to be here. What a beautiful day it is outside. Sun is shining. It's probably humid. I'm not sure, but we are so grateful for yet one more day that the Lord has allowed us. We don't take it for granted. When God wakes us up each morning, we don't take it for granted. We are to be thankful and to be grateful because the Bible says in everything give thanks. And so we are thankful for today. Tomorrow is not promised, but today we give God thanks. So welcome everyone and happy Father's Day to all the fathers on the line this morning. What a blessing without you. Well, we simply wouldn't be here. So we're grateful for you. The good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, the not so pretty. We are so grateful for you. We thank you. We extend a huge happy Father's Day to all of you this morning. And um, trust and pray that you will enjoy your day. Our theme, it is Youth Sunday and it's also Father's Day. Our theme is my father, my support, my hero, my friend. And those are all the attributes that are attributed to fathers today. Um, there are many more, um, but that's our theme for today. So welcome all. And once again, happy Father's Day. We are going to start this morning with a scripture reading. And Janelle White will be reading the scripture for us this morning. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Janelle. And uh... Happy Father's Day to all the fathers on the line. I will be reading um, St. Luke chapter 4, verse 11 to 22. So I'm going to start. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth to where he had been brought up. And, and as his custom was, he was into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up or to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering to, of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this, this scripture fulfilled in your ears and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of him, out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son and honor God's thy word by saying, amen. Amen. Thank you, Janelle. Our opening prayer this morning will be by Sister Shelly Ann Hardiel. Let us pray. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. A pleasant good morning to everyone and a special happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Father God, we just want to thank you for your goodness this morning. We want to thank you for your loving kindness. We want to thank you, God, because you are such a marvelous God. There is none like unto thee, O Lord, among gods. There is none like unto thee, God, for you are high above all else. Father God, your word tells us this morning that in you, all things consist. Mighty God, you are our shepherd. You are our keeper. You are our everything this morning. And so God, before we proceed with today's program, Father God, we just want to commit, Lord Jesus, everything into your hands everything concerning this service. Father God, we pray that you'll breathe 
upon each and every one of us who will be participating on the program this morning. I pray that you'll breathe upon the listeners, the viewers. Lord God, breathe upon your people who have taken the time to log on this morning to hear from you and to fellowship by virtue. Lord God, by this virtual means. Father God, we just commit everything into your hands. Lord, breathe upon the moderator. Father God, you know everything about her. God, you have chosen her for such a time as this. And so, God, I pray that you'll speak through her. I pray that as she leads us throughout the program, God, you'll minister to her. Father God, remember Janelle, who has just read the scripture. Continue to keep her in the hollow of your hands. Father God, remember the one who will bring forth the word. Breathe upon her, Lord Jesus. Minister through her, Father God. I know you have already prepared our heart, uh, God, to speak unto your people. So, Father, I I pray that you'll continue to restore her strength as she speaks. Continue to pour in and to pour out your spirit. Lord God, that your people will receive your words this morning. Father God, remember even the audio tech. Father God, those who are working behind the scenes, remember them this morning. We ask God that you will cut and clear the atmosphere. We ask that you will clear the line, oh God, from every interruption. Father, that your name will be glorified. That when all is said and done, we can see say, yes, Lord, it was good to have listened and viewed that which you have set before us this morning. Mighty God, you are our keeper. You are our friend. You are our everlasting father this morning. And so, God, we are aware and we acknowledge that we can't do anything without you. Father, if we go without you, if we act without you, if we do anything without you, Lord God Almighty, it is of no benefit, Lord Jesus. It's of no benefit but with you, Lord God, with your unction, with your blessing, with your direction, with your guidance, God, we know it will glorify your name and it will edify the body of Christ. Father God, breathe upon even the unsaved, Lord God. We don't know who is listening. We don't know who is viewing. But at this time, Lord God, if there be any unsaved, I pray that you'll prepare their hearts. Lord God, that they will receive of you this morning. They will receive of your salvation, Lord God Almighty, and cry out to you. Lord God, remember, Lord Jesus, the special singing, the special presentation, the special prayer. Father God, you know it all. I commit it into your hands, Daddy. Today is celebrated as Father's Day, but you are our everlasting Father, our Heavenly Father. So, Daddy Jesus, take over, take full control, mighty God. Move upon our hearts, move upon our minds, move upon our spirits, oh God. Lord, help us not to be distracted, God, with the things of the world, with the things of the house. Lord God Almighty, let us not be distracted this morning, but let us stay tuned and focus to you that you will be glorified in our midst. Father God, we just commit everything into your hands, Father, and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Shelly Ann, for praying this morning's prayer. Bless your name. As we know, it's Father's Day. That's the, um, <clears throat> the objective of our program today. And... Um, we recognize there are many that no longer have their fathers. We've all had a father, every one of us. We know we wouldn't be here, right? Um, we've all had a father, but we recognize there are those whose fathers have gone on, have passed away, and they're no longer in their lives. And we want to take a moment to honor those fathers because they have been the legacy. They have been the forerunners. They have paved the way we can't negate what the fathers have done that have gone on before. So we're going to take a moment right now and we're just going to honor our fathers who have passed away. We're going to honor them with a moment of silence. Thank you. And if your father, if you don't have a father today, just remember that um, our Heavenly Father, he's always there for us. Thank God that we have someone that we can pray to, someone that we can trust in, someone that we can talk to, someone that we can go to with 
whatever our situation is, whatever is bothering us, we have our Heavenly Father. And thank God we can go on our knees. We can pray. We can stand and pray. We can sit in our in our cars and we can we can we can just worship him. So just take take solace in the fact this afternoon, this morning, that we have a Heavenly Father and He's always there for you. At this time, we are going to have a reading, a poem by Dante Robinson. A dad isn't necessarily defined as the man who makes the child. Rather, a dad is the man who extends his hands and time to help with the child's raising and the heart to love the child through anything. Blood doesn't always make you a dad. Being a dad comes from the heart. God took the strength of a mountain, the patience of eternity, the death of a family need, combined these qualities and called it dad. Fathers are the strength of the family to bond us and hold us together, always there to mediate the household, the bodyguard that protects us and gives us comfort from harm. He constantly offers compassion, always offering us his arm. He stands behind us endlessly to protect us in darkness lest we fall. He's there to guide us to the light and for us to follow his call. A father's love is never ending, giving from the heart. Thank you, Father, for telling me how to live and also living and let me watch you do it. You are my role model, my example, and I thank you for building this family, a happy home filled with love for one another. Thank you for being my earthly protector, provider, and guide, and for leading me to the light. Dad, thank you for listening to the voice of God and for modeling Christ's likeness, giving me the examples that truly make life worth living. When I grow up, Dad, I want to be just like you. Thank you for being a godly dad. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers on the line. Beautiful. Thank you, Dante. So, fathers, if you didn't think you were special, just in listening to that poem that Dante just read, you know you are special. Like I said, without you, we wouldn't be here. So you are amazing in our lives today. We are now going to be blessed with some special singing. And we're going to be blessed with two songs from um, Karina McMorris. Be blessed this morning. Good morning, everyone. I just want to wish the fathers a happy Father's Day. This song is for you. Thank you. 
Beautiful. Thank you, Karina, for those two wonderful songs, extolling the virtues of the fathers and giving mostly credence and honor to our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Karina. We are now going to be um, favored with a video presentation. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Happy Father's Day.
Are you ready for that, yeah? Yeah! Are you ready for that, yeah? Yeah! Are you ready for that, yeah? Yeah! Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Beautiful. That was wonderful. I'm sure you all enjoyed that. It's precious memories. Thank God for video cams. Oh, thank God for video cams. So different from when I was small. But um, that was a wonderful video for all the fathers and grandfathers and precious memories. Just wonderful. Thank you. This time we're going to have um, Kimberly. She is going to offer up a prayer for all our fathers. Kimberly. I just want to wish everyone on the line a happy Father's Day. Uh, dear God, thank you for all the fathers and father figures in this world and for the many ways you use them to lovingly guide others to your heart. I ask that you would bless them and give them great joy and peace. May they see you and know you in new ways. Show them how much you love them and care about them. Guide their steps, use their hands, and make them a blessing to others as you continue to fulfill their special purpose for their lives. Lord, bless and keep our fathers. Make your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. I pray that in all respects, they may prosper and be in good health, just as their souls prosper. I pray for them that their love may abound more and more with the knowledge and all discernment so that they may approve what is excellent and be so pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus, to the glory and praise of God. According to your riches of your glory, grant all fathers to be strengthened with your power through your spirit in their inner being, so that Christ may dwell in their hearts, through faith that they may be rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses the knowledge, that they may be filled with the fullness of God. God, give our fathers your strength to steer them, your power to uphold them, your wisdom to guide them, your eye for their vision, your ear for their hearing, 
your word for their speech, your hand to protect them, and your shield for their shelter, your angels to guard them from ambush of devils and from traps of the flesh. Christ be beside them, Christ before them, Christ behind them, Christ within them, Christ beneath them, Christ above them, Christ on their right hand, Christ on their left, Christ where they lay, Christ where they sit, Christ where they rise. O oh God, cover completely as they carry out the task of guiding children you have entrusted to them. We ask all this in your, in your name, we pray, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for that prayer. It's time for the word, a very, very important part of our day. And um, we've had the prayers, we've had singing, we've had presentations, we've had uh, video presentations of children with their fathers and grandfathers. But now it's time for the word, time to hear from God, a word of encouragement for the fathers. And um, today we have a special lady that's going to be bringing forth the word. For the fathers, um, someone we all love, someone we all admire. She's a hard worker. She's diligent. She's a humble servant of God. And she is the one ordained to speak at this moment, to give a word of encouragement to the fathers, um, someone well known to us. And the prayer, Sister Shellyanne has always already prayed the prayer. I heard it was very comprehensive. She already prayed for the speaker, so we don't need to do another prayer. But then ask you just to turn your hearts up and your cups up to receive and welcome our speaker for the day, Sister Celine Marie Johnson Edwards, our speaker for the day. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Covenant of Promise. How are you doing this morning? So excited to be here this morning. First, giving honor and greetings to the Bishop of our house, uh, Pastor Hall, sir. We wish you a happy Father's Day. And to all the members, all the fathers out there, uh, we just want to give you a happy Father's Day greeting for today. We know it's a little bit different. Typically, if we were in church, uh, we would give you a token of appreciation and wrap our arms around you and to all of our visiting fathers that you know would have been there we just want to say happy father's day we love you dearly um we know that you know times are different this year for 2020 and so i'm asking all the kids if you haven't done so already i'm gonna give you five seconds to find your dad uh, find your grandpa, find your uncle, whoever it is that might be a father in your life uh, and just wrap your arms around him and tell him thank you for all that they've done um, and wish him a happy Father's Day real quick. All right, cool. Now run back to your seats and we're going to jump right into today's message. I'm so excited and before we begin, I'm just going to breathe a word of prayer uh, and ask God to come down and bless us today as we partake in his word. So Heavenly Father, you are just so awesome and we love you, God. The Father of us all, we thank you, God, that you, Heavenly Father, have given us air in our lungs to breathe and be able to celebrate our fathers today. God, we ask that you would just come down and, and breathe a word on what I have prepared, Lord God. You have given me uh, words and Lord God, I ask that what if things are on the page that might be missing or things that aren't on the page that might be missing, Lord God, uh, that you would just breathe them into me right now. Let, uh, let myself um, let self be slain at this point, Lord God, and let your, your glory and your honor be glorified in your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to dive into today's Father's Day uh, message. I'm so excited. Um, but first, before we begin, you know, I know when days um, like these come around every year, uh, there's a lot of mixed emotions in the room. And today we're in a virtual room. Um, but for some of us, you know, we're still fortunate that we have our fathers here and that we can celebrate them in the flesh and be able to wrap our arms around us. And so, you know, uh, we do that. But for many of us, our earthly fathers or those men that have played that father role um, have passed on. And so we aren't able to, to necessarily celebrate them in the flesh, but we remember, um, you know, the memories of them and, and we reminisce on all the good times that we had. Um, and then for others in, in this room, um, 
you know, days like today might be hard um, because your earthly fathers might be still alive, but the relationship might not be uh, what, it, what it needs to be or might not be good right now and maybe not even present at all. Um, so I do want to be sensitive to everybody um, in this space um, and hopefully be able to give everybody an encouraging word as they move forward from here on in that everybody can get something um, that we can listen to. All right, so fathers, buckle in. This one is for you. Okay, so in today's message, I will attempt to speak about our fathers, our heroes. Our fathers, our heroes. So the defini definition of hero, when we look at it, um, a few things came up. It said a mythological or legendary figure, often of divine descent, endowed with great strength or ability. It talked about an, Ill an illustrious warrior, a person admired for achievements and noble qualities, and one who shares great courage. Okay, so that's the definition of a hero. So when we think of all the shows and movies that we've ever watched that feature some type of hero, well, we're often met with these images. Super ordinary people who possess super ordinary strengths and abilities. In almost every scenario, the superhero is met with a particular challenge and they have to defeat this particular thing or person. And oftentimes, if they do not claim victory, many of their family, their friends, or a whole entire city, maybe even the world, might be in great danger. So we always find ourselves rooting for the superhero and when victory is apparent, we cheer and we feel a sense of relief to know that everything will be okay. Now what if we pause right there and I change the narrative and say that not all superheroes wear capes. Uh, not all of them possess out of the world or out of this world abilities and most, if not all of these particular heroes can't fly as well. In fact, most of these heroes or superheroes tend to look like this. The difference between these two types of superheroes is that while one hero does all he can to save the day, the other hero does all he can daily for a lifetime. In almost every superhero storyline, there is a process they must go through in order to be where they are. They train really hard or learn the art of being a hero from their mentors. Spider-Man had Tony Starks. The Ninja Turtles had Splinters. And my personal favorite, Kung Fu Panda had Master Shifu. But who do our earthly fathers have? The answer is Jesus. And the best guide for learning from the greatest mentor of all times is through the gift he left for this earth. He has given you all the Bible to study his words, to learn his ways, and to train with salvation. There's none greater than our master creator, ruler over all the superheroes, who was and is to come. So while I know it's not always easy, being a father is one of the most vital roles you will ever do in your life. Uh, in, in 2011, Stats Canada shared some numbers that stated about 8.6 million fathers lived in Canada, with about 3.2 million living here, right here in Ontario, in our great province. Those are some big numbers, so we want to make sure we take uh, the time to hopefully give some godly advice um, on equipping you to be the best hero you can possibly be. Today, for all of our superheroes listening, I want to touch on three points that I hope will help and encourage you to continue to do one of the greatest jobs on this earth. There are three vital powers that every great father needs in order to succeed at being a superhero for their children. 
The three points are the three F's. I call them the three F's. Follow faith and be faithful, faith and or be faithful, and a willingness to forgive. So follow faith, forgive. Okay, those are the three points we're going to be training on today, dads. So let's dive right into it. Follow, number one. Matthew 2, verse 13 to 15 talks about the, e, the great escape from Egypt. Okay, It says, When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child and kill him. So he got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. Verse 15 goes on to say where he stayed until uh, the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. Now in this passage we know that Jesus has been born um, and so Joseph is a brand new father. Uh, he was eager wide-eyed and probably ready to teach Jesus all he knew, uh, maybe even about carpentry and maybe even about taking over the family business. Um, and like many new fathers, and for those of you that might be vets in the room, um, take a trip down memory lane with us. So being a new dad uh, can bring so many anxieties. Are you holding the child the right way? Are you feeding them enough? Will you be able to teach the child right from wrong? Now the Bible says the angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph and he listened. It's so important to really take a look at his response and see how vital it is to be tuned in with the Holy Spirit. That when it speaks, you listen and follow. Too often you might try to rely on your own understanding or knowledge. But it's so much more important to listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit when you are leading your children because that is the compass that will keep you safe from hurt, harm, or danger. The Bible says that Joseph got up. He didn't delay or question what was spoken to him, but he just simply followed the instructions. He got up. The thing to know here is that when they left, it was nighttime. It wasn't daytime, the sun wasn't shining, you know, the lights weren't on, uh, you know, it wasn't bright outside. It was night. Now I'm gonna imagine it was probably really, really dark back then. So, you know, let's think, they probably had just fallen asleep, had little baby Jesus all nestled in for the night. Um, and I think being a new father or a parent, you know, once the baby goes down for the night, you don't wake them up because you don't know how long they're going to sleep for. Like, this is your time of peace and rest. And so it probably wasn't the easiest thing for Joseph, you know, to go over and nudge Mary. And tell her, you know, honey, uh, you and the baby, you got to get up um, and get dressed. We've got to go and we've got to go now. Okay. The part of the story that's interesting to me, though, is... There was no reference of a conversation between Mary and Joseph. They just got up and left. Now, being a wife, uh, I know we have the gifting sometimes of being able to question when our husbands say certain things out of love, out of love, obviously. Um, but Mary didn't question Joseph and ask him if he was crazy to wake up the baby and leave in the night to travel all the way across town to Egypt just because of some danger that was perceived to be coming. The Bible said, so he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. When a father takes time to get under the will and instructions of the Almighty, there is no doubt when he says it is time to go Every child and every member of his family responds in a manner of following behind because they know the divine source where he is getting his information from and there is no questions needed. 
Following God's direction allows you to create a pattern of behavior that your children will follow suit in. Now, I remember growing up as a child and always wanting to learn how to drive. This is a very big, important time in any young person's life. And so, so now, for those of you that know my father, um, you know that he drove hard back in the day. He drove extremely hard. Um, he has now since slowed down. Uh, now that his reflexes have gotten uh, refined, let's call it. Um, he's watching. Happy Father's Day, Dad. So I got to be nice today. So it's not old. It's it's refined. Um, and so I remember watching him drive and how he drove, his posture, his hand placements, his demeanor, everything. And I remember when I started to learn how to drive, my driving tendencies imitated that of my father's. I had my hand, my left hand on 10 right there, and my right hand, which should have been on two, was on the gear stick uh, that was in between the two front car seats. It was crazy. It was such a natural position for me, not because that's what he told me to do, but simply because that's what he showed me. That's what I learned. I looked at him, I studied him, and that's what I learned. And so a child will always learn and try to uh, follow your lead in many of life situations. They will look at how you dealt with things and many times follow the same path you did. So it's important to align yourself with the giver of life-sustaining instructions and follow his directions because they will lead you down the path of righteousness, righteousness and not astray. Fathers, when you follow God's instructions, it makes it easier for your children to follow you. I found it very interesting that all throughout the Gospels, on more than 20 occasions, uh, we see Jesus say the words, follow me. In Matthew 19, verse 21, he says, uh, he, Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. Mark uh, 1 verse 17 says, And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Luke 29 verse 23 says, And he said to the all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. John 12 verse 26, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servants be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now these words are words from our Heavenly Father, seeking to show us the right way of living a godly life. And he wants to lead us into the path of righteousness. Fathers, I implore you, I implore you to continue to follow after Christ as you lead your children and guide them through life. There might be times when it seems like they don't need you anymore or have gotten to a point, you know, when they're able to take care of themselves. They've grown up, they've left the nest, um, but a child will always need advice as they navigate through life. And they'll always seek out ways they can follow in your footsteps. I can count countless times I've called my dad on several occasions for the simplest of things or advice. Just recently, I had him over for uh, advice on our backyard and what he thought would be the best course of action um, and, and seeing how he, you know, um, did things with his garden and something similar as, as a garden or, or grass or lawn and being able to kind of ask him and, and, you know, situations around the house that might need fixing. How do we do this? How did you do this? And how did you, you know, go through this? And so you want to ensure the steps your children are trying to mimic are steps that are led under the anointing of God. And so number two, we talk about faith, okay? So in Genesis, we learn about a man, father named Abraham, uh, who was later known as the father of many. But during this passage, we see Abraham's faith tested. 
Now at this point, God has asked Abraham to take his son Isaac up to the top of the mountain where he's going to show him a place. And he wants Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice to him. Now Abraham had another son, Ishmael, but Abraham sent him uh, and his mother, Hagar, into the wilderness. So at this point in time, Isaac is the lone son uh, left on the camp to Abraham and his wife, Sarah. Um, and to his dismay, uh, God is now asking him to kill his own flesh and blood. Now, if you, you know the depths of the story. You know that Abraham, you know, sought after God for a son and that, you know, he prayed and he was earnest um, and his wife and they, you know, they really wanted to have a son. And it wasn't until they were late, I mean, a century, literally, um, um, you know, God finally blessed them with a child. And now God is saying, I want the child back. And so you can imagine Abraham's dismay. You've been praying for something and earnestly seeking God. And now you finally got what you've been asking for. Now God is saying, I want it back. You're thinking, uh, God, what do you mean by this? And so we'll look at Genesis 22 verses 9 to 13 as it reads like this. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took a knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son from me. You've not your held me, your son, your only son. And Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horn. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. From an early age, it was drilled into my head. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so in other words, it might, you know, easier terms are for us to understand. It. It's just saying um, it might not be present yet in the physical realm or in the physical sense, but faith gives me the belief that it's on its way. I might not have it, but I know it's there. And so in this passage, I can only imagine what was going through Abraham's mind as he led his son up to the mountain, knowing what was about to be his destiny. A son who he had prayed for years and years for, earnestly for. And one that came at a very late stage of life. And yet now Abraham's faith is tested at the thought that he has to give his son back. He has to take his son's own life. Fathers, have you ever been in a place of desperation where you were trying to lead your family, take care of your children? provide for your household and yet still had no clue where that next mortgage payment was coming from or if the next few dollars would show up for that grocery that needed to be bought true faith is going to the bank machine knowing good and well paycheck is not hitting for another four days um, and trusting and hoping and praying that something is there to help I can only imagine there must be times um, when you have the smallest of faith, with those overclass, overcast uh, clouds looming around and you had a small faith that things were definitely going to get better. It says, the word says that uh, even faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. If you know a mustard seed is like really, really small, just place it on your hands. And if you think of a mountain, like Mount Everest, that thing is huge. And you're telling me that faith can move that mountain. I can move that mountain with my faith. And so now Abraham is heading up to the mountain. And, and now he gets to the place where God has shown him. And he places the boy on the altar. And he's getting ready to take his life, to offer him as a sacrifice. And just at the moment of contact... The angel of the Lord yells out to Abraham and tells him to stop what he's about to do. 
and confirms that his faithfulness to him, to God, his love for serving his creator goes beyond the love he has for his son. We see later in the Bible a similar story, one that involves a father and a son, one that involves a rugged cross, and it shows the world the ultimate sacrifice. Our father offering up his only son to not only die for us, to give us life more abundantly, but to save us all. When I read this passage of scripture, the song Made Away by Travis Green uh, came to mind. If you know the song, the opening stanza goes like this. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out and you're watching us now. And when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and stepped in. And everything you need or everything we need, you supply. You got this in control and now we know that you made a way. Now Travis wrote this song uh, based on an event that was actually happening uh, in his life or happened in his life. And he speaks very openly about it. Um, it was during a time where his faith was put to the test. And the only way he was going to prove God was to put all his trust in him and know that everything was going to work out. Um, he had to believe before he could see it. And so during the birth of his first child, uh, the doctors basically said his son, uh, pretty much like Isaac was going to die. Your son's going to die. But Travis noted that something rose up inside him that said he served a God that was bigger than death. And that he had, he and his wife uh, were basically going to pour all that they had, all the faith that they had left inside of them and call on Jesus to simply make a way. And so after you uh, make the effort to follow God's instructions like Joseph uh, and the first point, it takes faith to trust where God is leading you to. The story of Abraham doesn't end with him killing his son. The Bible says that God provided a ram for Abraham to sacrifice instead of his son. And to me, that speaks volumes. This act shows that when you are faithful to God, he is faithful to you. On the theme of being a superhero, uh, there is one thing to know. The hero will always find a way to come through. They faithfully find ways to help others and to make sure they protect those around them. Being faithful and depending on God is one thing. Okay, fathers, but being a faithful uh, father to your household and to your children and for your children to be able to depend on you, that's in a whole different ballgame. Are you present at their games, their after school events, their plays? You know, do you show up for dinner after work and, you know, ask them how their day was going? Are you there to be a sounding board when life hands them a tough decision to make? One of my favorite pictures uh, in our family is one of Tyson uh, throwing Sydney up in the air um, in a pool it, on one of our family vacations. Now, at this point in time, Kyrie is still swimming inside of my belly. So um, uh, I was doing a lot of the picture taking uh, during this vacation. And so I love this picture because you could see the pure excitement on Sid's face as her daddy threw her up in the air. Um, and you can see the joy on Tyson's face uh, as he provided her with the thrill of flying for just a split second. Um, but what I loved about the picture is that it depicted the faith that Sid had in her father and the faith that he was going to catch her. She wasn't worried about how high she was. 
Uh, she wasn't worried about, you know, being suspended in air over water. At this point, if she fell in, she wasn't a swimmer. So, you know, disaster waiting to happen. I think I had some faith in this too. But um, she wasn't worried about how, you know, how high she was or being suspended over water. Um, her focus at that moment was the flight, the experience, the joy. But if she didn't trust her father would catch her, do you think her faith in him would have been that strong? Your children will always have faith in you as a father when they can trust you will be there at all times and be there for them. Sometimes as heroes, simply being in the room to catch your child if they fall means more than they can articulate. Having that faith in you as a man of the house, that dad will always be there to catch me is all the security children need in order to try to fly and try to reach for the sky and not be afraid of making mistakes. Having faith in a God who is able to do all things and being faithful in your deeds and actions should always be your priority, fathers. As I have grown in age and in my walk with God, I've come to realize that faith is sometimes um, something that we have to work on. It's not always easy, you know, and, and sometimes it's tested. And it's almost like you have to will it into motion at times. Um, but with every test, my faith grows stronger. And as you build your trust in your children and they build their trust in you, uh, faith can only grow stronger. And so sometimes it breaks, um, you know, the faith that we have in each other. Sometimes it breaks, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's finished. It simply means that it's time to repair keep going and move on and so that brings me to my next point forgiveness so we talked about following we talked about faith and now we're on forgiveness so compare it to um the other points this superpower might be the hardest to fulfill forgiveness for lack of a better meaning, simply means um, or simply tells us to forget the wrong and have a willingness to move forward. It shows one's ability to look past any ill intentions and to continue to have a positive relationship. Forgiveness at times is hard because it involves very, very strong emotions of hurt, shame, anger, resentment, and we can go on and on and on. So sometimes forgiveness takes time. The ability to forgive is such a vital part of the human development, not only for the one being forgiven, uh, but for the person who has to show grace and forgive as well. In one scholarly journal that I was able to read, um, it stated that, you know, basically forgiveness um, can be an effective problem-solving strategy in releasing all that energy, releasing all that negativity, all that hurt, all that pain, um, and letting it flush out um, your own anger and being able to rejoin um, in community with that other party or parties involved. And so forgiveness is a necessary superpower for any father because being able to show this unconditional level of grace provides a welcoming place for any child to feel loved, to feel unjudged and protected. It fosters an environment where children can come to you uh, when they have done wrong and know your love for them won't change. One of my favorite passages uh, that shows this unwavering uh, demonstration of forgiveness takes place in the Gospel of Luke. It's the parable of the prodigal son or the lost son. Many people would know this. Uh, many movies and shows and stories have adapted this concept, but um, it shows a father's love for his child and his ability to forgive him despite his shortcomings and mindless antics. And in the story, we know uh, that the son asks uh, the father for his birthright, his inheritance, all the money that was supposed to be for him, um, and decides to leave his father, leave his brother, and venture out on his own. He is out. He wants to go explore the world. He wants to do his own thing. He doesn't want to have to deal with 
you know, um, rules of the house. He wants to be out. No problem. So the father gives him everything that is for him and he ventures out. And so after some time, the, fell, the, the son fell uh, into extremely hard times. He lost all the inheritance. The money is gone. He has no place to lay his head. And at this point, he's eating out of uh, the animal's food. You know, the pig's pen and, and, and just to fill his stomach. So he's, he's literally hit rock bottom. And when he finally comes to his senses... And realizes his mistake, he decides to venture back to the house he once called home. So we take a look at Luke 15 verses 20 to 24 and it reads like this. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe. Quick, not when you're done what you're doing, not when you get a moment, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Verse 24 says, For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. There's so many amazing pieces of nuggets of gold in this relationship that we can learn from. Um, it says that the father saw his son a long way off and he was overwhelmed that he, the father, got up and ran to his son. What an amazing feeling that must have been for the son. To see your father, you know, you probably, he was probably walking back thinking, what am I going to say to dad? How am I going to make this right? How am I going to fix this situation that I've gotten myself into? I've messed up royally. And yet he sees his father running towards him. Should be the other way around. Um, and so, you know, it was an amazing film because at this point he knows he's done wrong. Um, you know, the way he might have disgraced the family name. People might have been talking about, you know, him and how poorly he must have been raised. And yet still his father met him at the point of where he was to wrap his arm around him and to tell him that he missed him through his embrace. Fathers, there might be times when you know your child has done wrong. You know you they've messed up big time. And for the most part, uh, you probably even know uh, or knew uh, what the outcome of their poor decision was going to be before it even happened. But how many of you take the time to meet your child at the point of where they might be. The son goes on to speak about his iniquities filled with shame and guilt. And even, yeah, he even went as far as to say is, I can't be called your child anymore. Don't call me son, dad. I haven't, I haven't done anything um, to, be, to de deserve to be called your son. And the father does something amazing. Forgiveness steps in at this point. The father turns and he says, shh done stop talking you were lost but now you're found he cleaned him up okay he said go go get a robe clean him up give him a nice shave you know get him a haircut a nice fade do all that good stuff you know give him a bath clean him up put the finest clothes around him not just anything but the finest of the finest things that we can find and put him around him and he threw a banging party, an amazing welcome back party to celebrate his son's return. I want you to stop just for a moment and think about what your response would have been in this situation. Think about some of the highlight real mess ups your children might have done. Did you respond like this father did? In this story, 
Or were your children met with harsh, heat of the moment words? I am in no way discrediting the value of tough love and even a harsh reality. I have been met with those things before. But when it's all said and done, the best way to gauge your superpower ability to forgive your children would be to see if your child, like the prodigal son, always finds a way to come back home. Do they come back? It's not always easy to forgive, but with great power comes great responsibilities. And with being a father, with the job of being a dad, being able to forgive has to come with the territory. See, now maybe it's you, you know, you're the one that have done wrong and you might be wondering if your child will ever forgive you. Forgive the deed that you might have done. Forgiveness works both ways and it's never too late to reach out. See, asking for forgiveness is not a sign of weakness, but rather an acknowledgement that wrong has been done, but you don't want to stay that way. You don't want to leave it where it is. You want to be able to move past that in some way, shape, or form. Our Heavenly Father is the master of this superpower. His capacity of being able to forgive even the vilest of acts, says Barnum. He was sent, or he sent his only son to suffer and die on a cross as a gift to humanity, for humanity, simply to bridge the gap of forgiving us of our sins. If God's condition, I'll take a take a real, you know, think about this or dwell on this. If God's condition of forgiving us matched our condition of forgiving others, none of us would be worthy to be called his child. But he shows us time and time again that even when we are not worthy, even when he sees us a far way off, he always runs to us and wraps us in his arms and calls us his son, his daughter, his child, despite everything that we might have done, God always meets us at the point of where we are, just like this father did for this son. Nothing we do or have ever done can separate us from the love of Christ. And we simply have to ask for his forgiveness and he shows favor and grants it, no questions asked. So today, as we take time to celebrate you fathers, I pray that you will continue to invest into sharpening your super powers of one, following Christ and being led under his guidance, two, being faithful to the call on your life and to leading your children in love, and three, forgiving your children as Christ has forgiven you. I want to send you all virtual hugs of appreciation. I love you with the love of God. Happy Father's Day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Kids, spoil your fathers. Spoil the, the men in your life that are, are taking up the banner of being a father figure in your life. We love you. We appreciate you. We adore you. We give you hugs and kisses and we say happy Father's Day. Hopefully you were able to grab something out of this message being able to follow after Christ, being able to have faith the size of a mustard seed and being able to forgive the wrongs that might be done. We thank you. We pray for you. We love you. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you, Sister Salee, for such a heartfelt encouragement um, to all of us, but more specifically to the fathers. I'm sure that every father listening on this line today has received something from what you shared. We thank you for the encouragement. We thank you for the word. May God continue to bless 
your many ministries, Sister Silly. May God continue to shine upon you. Amen and amen. This time we are going to, just before um, I'm going to call Bishop Clifton Hall, I'm going to just, um, as we reflect on what Sister Sally says, she talked about following and faith and forgiveness and not always easy, but she was able to outline it to us and especially to all the fathers um, this morning. And let's try our best to um, fathers to adhere to and follow and ask God for guidance. So this time we're going to call upon our spiritual father, Bishop Clifton Hall. Happy Father's Day, Pastor Hall. And he's going to come. He's going to give um, his closing and the benediction. Our spiritual father, Bishop Clifton Hall. Thank you, Sister Andrea. Good morning to everyone. Happy Father's Day. Hoping that all you brothers and fathers are enjoying your day. And Sister Sally has blessed us with the word for the day. I believe that everyone has had a chance to take your bit, your nugget, your piece, and apply it to the areas of your life that you want to make it better, specific, in a particular way. Or maybe there are some ways that we just need to uh, become better fathers. We are encouraged right across the spectrum to um, forgive like our Lord did, follow the instructions of godly advice, like when God spoke to uh, Joseph and told him, flee, take your family and run. And he never hesitated. Like Sally said, he woke up his family and says, hey, it's time to go. There was no time for much debate or conversation, but they all packed and went because it was God's doing, it was God's timing, and it was God's direction. So we are encouraged from the word of God this morning to just be a good listener, be a good follower, and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us when he speaks to us. So, brothers, our jobs are not complete until he takes us out of here. Even though we may not have small children in our homes anymore, some of us, but like Sally says, she continues to call and to ask for and to seek out advice in the different areas when needs be. No hesitation, she knows exactly who to go to, where to go, whether or not he feels like it, she's gonna call anyway, because that's dad. So thank you, Sister Sally, for the word of God today to challenge us. And uh, may you, Dad, continue to serve the Lord and to serve your families. It's a full-time job. It's a full-time responsibility to honor God and to give leadership for such a critical time as we are living in today. Our young people, seems like some of them do not have godly fathers or fathers at all in their lives. Some end up in serious, serious state of affairs and on the wrong side of the fence, end up becoming law breakers, violators, and we know the end. We see it all play out in our streets every day. So we thank the Lord for good fathers taking our roles seriously and allowing you know those to whom god has given us
to know that, you know, even when the decisions are hard, we still have to make them because they're the right decisions. And children, learn to love your fathers and respect them for who they are. Because you only have one. You only have one. All right? Love them. And when they follow the line, be respectful and tell them. May not like what went down, but just be respectful. And you will see the other side of dad because a dad is always a dad. All right? God bless you. Trust everyone who were ministered unto through the word of God today. Take your fill and enjoy the blessings of God. Wherever you go, whatever you do, be thou an example. All right? God bless you. For a few moments, I'm going to pray and um, bring this session to closure. And uh, it's a good place to remind the dads today that your families are watching you. Brother Andrew White says, a few years ago, when I got ready to baptize them, and his testimony was, I have a family, and I know my children are looking up to me. And I have to set a good example to lead them and to guide them. And the right thing to do is to serve God and to lead by godly examples. And we saw him in the video not so long ago, having a party, a field day with his two kids on the floor, just playing and having a good time. But yes, children needs good, godly leadership for such a time as this. So brothers, I cannot stress enough. Our responsibilities are critical. They're critical. We're losing our young men. Do what you can. Talk to them, counsel them, teach them, show them. Scold them when you must. Do it in love. They will rise up and call you blessed later because you have done the right thing. So let me just say thanks to everyone that has zoomed in to this broadcast this morning. We are going to pray. If you have a need today, it's a good opportune time to just invite the Lord in the situation. Maybe you're living in guilt, with guilt. What kind of guilt does that look like? Would that be something that you've done, something that you've said? Sometimes we do things and we're convicted after the facts. Well, you know, we've always... We drag them on and we never talk about them or, you know, ask forgiveness or clarify it. And I just carry on with us like a suit that we wear. But no, 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 no. When things are not right, talk about it. That's the easiest way to rectify and to find resolve. Talk about it. it. may not be easy, but talk about it. Find a way. If you have to tell God something today that's not going well in your life, tell him about it. He said, come unto me, all you that labor, and I have elated, and I will give you rest. God is still and talking terms. So whether we need to talk to our wives are our children or a family member. Talk to whoever you have to. You need to talk to God about it.
tell God. Tell God. He's ready to forgive you. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Don't carry around the burden. Burdens are just too hard to carry around. You sleep with them. You wake up. They don't go anywhere because until you deal with them, they are not going anywhere. And that's why Christ says, cast them on me because I care. So I invite you this morning to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Lord, forgive me. I have sinned. I've been disobedient. I've been rebellious. I've just been struggling and not wanting to surrender. Why not? Just surrender. Just give it up. Jesus is saying, give it to me. I'll take care of it. And go and enjoy what God has for you. If you need to confess of your sins today, it's a good place and time to do that. The Lord is coming soon. I don't know when. Neither do you. But we see the signs everywhere. Brothers, sisters, friends. Talking to you. We need to just get it right. We've all been under lockdown for three months. And um, in a couple of weeks, we are looking forward to reopening where we can congregate again. But the Lord could come before them. Priorities are important, families. So let's tell the Lord about what's bothering you today. If there's something that you need to repent of, tell God about it. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. So if I'm speaking to you this morning, just ask the Lord to take away your shame and your guilt. You can't hide it under a towel under the rug. Just ask the Lord to set you free from it so you can fly. So I invite you now. Lay your hands on your family, whoever they may be, your daughter, your son, your husband, your wife, your children, your grandkids, and lead them in the prayer as I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your dear son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blessed hope that we have in you. The hope that never lets us become ashamed. For your love is shed abroad, O God, in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for what you have done. You have prepared for us hope, life, forgiveness, healing, restoration. Lord, and we thank you that you have given us redemption through your son, Jesus Christ. So we ask you today that if there's a person in this viewing audience and has never surrendered their lives to you, that today on this celebrated Father's Day around the world, that God, they will truly know that there is a Heavenly Father that cares. They may not have had a good relationship with an earthly father, but you are our heavenly father. And God, you want to re repair that relationship. So come, glorify yourself, touch the lives of my brother and sister and families, whoever they may be. Lord, there may be some that are sick, hurting, afflicted, 
I lift them up in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Brother Wendell Ford in the hospital room. Bring healing into his body. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are the healer for the total, complete man. And whoever else may be sick, touch them. By your mighty power, be healed in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body. Let the peace of God overshadow you from the crowns of your head to the soles of your feet. May the scales from your eyes fall off. May you see the clear of day. May you see that which God is showing you. May you experience revelation, knowledge, impartation, fresh direction by the power of God. May the things that is bothering you roll away and the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill your heart afresh. Be healed, my brother, my sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, whoever you are, I pray for your miracle to come and overtake you. Manifest your power, God, in their lives this very moment. That boy, that girl, that young person, that young lady, in the name of Jesus, Satan, drop your weapon and flee. The Lord has given us authority over you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for destroying the works of the enemies and giving total, complete victory. Lord, we praise you today for this is a new day that you have made and we will rejoice and we will give you thanks. Thank you for hearing us now, God, for shutting down the plan of the enemy and for opening new avenues and doors and, Lord, paths, fresh paths to walk. And, God, we give you the glory for divine favor and for freedom and for faith to grow in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for healing every person that may be listening in the workplace, Lord, in the hospital, in your bed, not feeling well this morning. Touch them again, Father. And may your presence be felt wherever they may be at this time. God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. And we pronounce the blessings of God to flow and fill their beings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah. Uh, Thank you, my brothers, families, friends, for joining with us. And before I turn it back to the moderator, let me give a few quick announcements. These announcements are reminders. As you know that we made our first announcement with regards to reopening last week. So this would be the second announcement and there will be a final one next Sunday. So on the 5th of July will be our official reopening of our service to be convened at our church location. Covenant of Promise 
Ministries. That's the name of the church. If you're punching up on your computer, Covenant of Promise Ministries at bellnet.ca. That would be the uh, website that you will see and go for your giving, for your tithes, for information, so on and so forth. All of that you will on his 30 pen drive. That's at Finch and Milvan, five lights over, east of Islington, east from Islington, going east and Finch, five lights over, you make a left turn on to Milvan, and then Milvan will take you to Penn. All right, and it's number 30, just around the bend. And if you're coming west on Finch, it would be two lights over from Western Road, going west on Finch. That would be Milvan Drive. You make a right turn, and then the first street would be Penn Drive, number 30. Our starting time will be at 11 a.m. on the 5th of July. We want for you to come and join us. And please do note, it's going to be a very special day of service. Even though it's going to be about an hour and a half or so, it's going to be a very, very special service. We want for you to uh, take a note as to what is required. Government is asking that as church, as churches, we do encourage our people. It's a part of the requirement that we all wear our mask. All right, go and invest in a, in a couple of masks or if, the, if it's the reusable ones, you can wash them and, but everyone needs to bring a mask for the intended reasons for the, fact that we're all there of course everything is marked out the physical distancing will be in place hand sanitizers and all of the instructions we have done due diligence to do all of the things that is asked of us by the government to put everything in place what we are asking you to do is to help us make it easy to enforce it by following the instructions what we're asking you to do is to come prepared all right standard procedures will be in place for part questions have you come in contact with covid have you been out of the country um any flu-like symptoms and um no to it and if you are having a symptom of any sort then the person that is checking you would uh, advise you to seek medical help and um, but if you're running a fever that would not be the day to come to church you would need to go and get checked to make sure what it is all right, so those protocols are in place. Secondly, we want to ask for volunteers, extra volunteers among our members. Of course, for the same intended reasons that we want to make things as smooth as possible. So we want to have additional volunteers. Um, please submit your names to Sister Michelle and we will be in touch with you so that we will know what area you will, you are able to serve or will want to serve and who the person is so we can get in touch with you ahead of, uh, ahead of time. There will not be any children's church. 
there will not be any Sunday school, at least for the first few weeks as we as we get things sorted out, then that 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 needs to be um, reintroduced. But right now we will sit as families, your children coming in, they'll be sitting with you. Wherever you're sitting as parents, we don't have to separate. Um, long as you're from the same household, you can sit together. But all of the other physical distancing will be marked out so that everyone will understand exactly. We have plenty, plenty of room. We have brought in the professionals and they are very excited about our facilities and have seen what we have. And, you know, they're just excited to see what we've done and what we are doing. So um, we're ready and we, we are, we're, we're glad that, um, you know, they, 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 I think they're taking pictures to kind of use us as a model to, um, to kind of encourage the others to follow our protocol, our, our um, way of doing things. So, uh, and that is good news, but we just want to make sure that we're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. So um, on the 5th of July is the set day. Please note that any other information that you may need ahead of time, don't be afraid. You don't have to um, wear any gloves. Gloves will be provided for uh, the use of the persons that needs them, but you do not have to wear gloves to church. All right? I think that's pretty well all the announcements I have for now. Thank you once again. Please be reminded to go ahead and do your giving through your e-transfer or whatever other process procedures that you're following. May the Lord richly, richly bless you. And it was a honor and a pleasure to just uh, encourage you, share these words, and we look forward to see every member of the families. Again, it's been three months. I can't wait to see. I've run into a few people here and there, but for the most part, we have not seen each other. So it's gonna be an exciting time. Let's pray, let's believe, let's invite friends and families and let's celebrate the goodness and the greatness of God. God bless you, Sister Andrea. Thank you, Pastor Hall. Just have two announcements before I pronounce the benediction. Um, as masks will be mandatory, just announcing that Sister Naomi Scott has masks um, um, for sale, um, $10 each, so you can contact her either before or once you get to church um, in July, she'll have them on hand for you. And the second announcement is there's no children's church today because it's Father's Day. And so the fathers have the evenings to do whatever they want with their children. So no children's church. I will now pronounce the benediction. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, ever rest, remain and abide with us all now and forevermore and all god's people say amen have amen. a great day everyone amen. and god bless